All right, as if the last question wasn't long enough with all the work and integral trickery, we got another one. At least this one has a bit of a fun twist to it, I would say, instead of just a pure computation like the P and M were. The statement reads, picture an electron as a uniformly charged spherical shell where charge E and radius big R spinning at some angular velocity omega. Calculate the total energy contained in the electromagnetic fields Calculate the total angular momentum contained in the fields. And C, according to Einstein's formula, E equal mc squared, the energy in the fields should be contributed to the mass of the electron. Lorenz and others speculated that the entire mass of the electron might be accounted for in this way. U, the energy of the um, electromagnetic field, is equal to the mass of the electron times C squared, Suppose, moreover, that the electron spin angular momentum is entirely attributed to electromagnetic fields, so LEM is equal to H uh, bar over 2. On these two assumptions, determine the radius and angular velocity of the electron. What is their product, omega r? Does this classical model make sense? Okay, again, when we're dealing with things like the subatomic world, and electrons, and other particles, that is a quantum system, so classical um, models don't always work, and we'll see that illustrated in this exercise. All right, so with that being said, if we're assuming that this model is the way it is, we first need to determine the fields for the electron as a charged spherical shell. Okay, well, we've seen that the field inside, for electric field inside, Gauss's log is a zero, and then we just have one over four pi epsilon naught q over r squared, but q here is e, so points in a radial direction, no big deal. Here, the B field, again, spinning shell. So we have the magnetization, um, which is mu r omega um, for inside. And then we have the dipole for the outside. Um, let's put together some things here. The sigma is the surface charge density. So we have E over 4 pi r squared, M being the uh, magnetization, the magnetic moment, um, again, that had the special form of four pi sigma omega r to the fourth. If we plug in sigma, we see a lot of cancellations, and we see that that boils down to e over three omega r squared. Okay, this will all come in later, but good to specify them now. So we also need to note that with this configuration, we have an internal and external field to consider. So the total energy is the sum of these. Okay, we've kind of seen this before. Let's go ahead and dive in. The energy density u is equal to 1 half epsilon naught e squared plus 1 over mu naught b squared so that the total energy within so uh, excuse me so that the total energy within the fields of the of the internals fields of the electron as a spinning shell would be equal to uh, wn is equal to un d tau so again we see that e is equal to 0 that goes away and we can just sub in the b uh, simplify that through you see we had a lot of cancellations pretty quickly uh, so yeah, we'll go ahead and take, uh, take everything out. You see after the simplifications, you get, uh, cancellations and simplifications get two over three squared mu times sigma squared r squared omega squared times d tau, excuse me. So the sigma squared will go ahead or sigma will go ahead and plug in, hence the red. And, uh, what we see there is, uh, we'll plug that in and we'll write out the, uh, integral which gives us a sphere, of course, so we know that that's equal to 4 pi r cubed. We square everything in the uh, uh, sigma in the red, and now you see we got a lot of cancellations with a lot of stuff. The uh, a factor of 4 pi r squared cancels with the r squared from the magnetic field and the 4 pi from the uh, integration. And so if we simplify that even more after the fact, what we see is that the 2 and the 4 simplify down, we get that 9 times 3, which gives us a factor there as well. And then uh, you see mu e squared, omega squared. The r squared cancels down with the r cubed from the integration. And we just get a whole bunch of canceling nonsense, a bunch of math. Just be careful. Uh, so we see that the energy on the, in on the inside of the electromagnetic fields, or rather, excuse me, the energy from the interior fields give us uh, mu uh, times e squared omega squared r over 54 pi. Okay, I wrote the expansion there so you see where everything came from. Um, you'll see why in a couple of slides when they cancel. 
All right, so for the external fields, now we've got to recall that b squared is equal to the dot product. So if we're taking the dot product of the, back, the um, what am I saying? The dot product of these uh, uh, dipole fields, we see that we got a bunch of constants. So we have mu over 4 pi times m over r cubed squared. Then we have 2 cosine squared and then r dot r. Um, and then you see we have uh, theta dot theta. Although we're technically supposed to distribute, it's just that r dot theta and theta dot r both go to zero since they're orthogonal. And the dot product of orthogonal vectors is zero. So it saves us some time there. Um, all right, so now that we have that, what we see here is that we have four cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. And so for that, what we need to do is uh, for that sine squared, we'll plug in a one minus cosine squared just to get it all in terms of one trig function. And that's where we get the three cosine squared in the next step. Uh, so then w out is equal to one half in the integral of um, the electric field, which we had previously seen, and this dot product field. So good to go there. A lot of simplifications to come. Square everything. You see the epsilons cancel. You see the mu not cancel. You see uh, we have a four squared pi squared in both. The one half from the e fit or the uh, density comes out. Um, yeah, and then we're left, once we plug in d tau, we're left with a lot of radius components canceling. And you see that the phi component can go by itself, giving us a factor of 2 phi, uh, or excuse me, 2 pi that cancels down to that last step for this slide. And you have 0 to pi and then r to infinity since we're on the outside of the shell, quote unquote. And uh, yeah, now we need to split this up uh, and integrate accordingly. So we have the E field contribution and the magnetic field contribution. Integrate them down, split it up. You see you get a sine d theta and one over r squared dr for the E field part that E squared epsilon naught is a constant. Similarly for the magnetic field, you get mu naught m squared out front. And then you have a d theta integral, which is kind of chunky and a one over r to the fourth dr integral. Let's uh, let it ride through. Sine integral for the E field gives us two. The one over R squared gives us one over big R. Now we have the uh, three cosine squared giving us a four after evaluation. And then one over R to the fourth gives us a uh, one over three R cubed. And now we just have to do our dandest to simplify these down. Um, let's go ahead and do that. You see in the next step, we have 1 over 4 squared pi times 2 e squared over epsilon naught r plus 4 mu naught m squared highlighted in red so we can substitute it in and we, uh, over 3 r cubed. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead. And the next step, we simplify down by splitting up the bracket and distributing the 1 over 4 squared pi so we can have a little more room. You see that the 16 on the e field part goes to 8 thanks to the cancellation of 2s. And you see that uh, the fours cancel on the magnetic field part. And earlier we showed that the uh, little m was equal to e over 3 omega r squared. And now we have to square it. So uh, now that we have the e field component is equal to 1 over 8 epsilon naught pi over uh, times e squared over r. Now the magnetic field component after we square the m substitution gives us a 1 over 4 bracket mu naught over three uh, r cubed, which cancels with the r fourth from the square. And then we have e squared and then three squared, omega squared. All that to say that uh, we have a lot of squares there to account for. So in the next step, we see that the e field component is still one over eight epsilon naught pi, e squared over r, plus mu naught e squared, omega squared, r squared, over 108 pi. Okay, so the total here is wn plus w out. Okay. So what we need to do is find a common denominator. So that being said, we have a mu, uh, we multiply by two over two on the uh, WN part, keep the electric field part by itself for now. And uh, then the magnetic field components, as you see, uh, will combine together to give us a two plus one after we find a common denominator all over 108. And then, uh, yeah, now, that 3 over 108 gives us a 1 over 36 in reduction. And you see the contribution of the E and the contribution of the magnetic field separated like this. Um, 
Although messy, I don't think any of it was really tricky. Just a lot of no, uh, bookkeeping, in my opinion. Um, but let's see how this uh, simplifies down to what at, we're actually curious about. So this is a quite similar problem to what we did earlier, uh, particularly question uh, 8.10, with Q equal E and M equal one-third E omega R squared. So we know that the uh, angular momentum is equal to mu naught MQ over 6 pi R Z hat. Plug everything in, cancel away. And we have mu naught E squared omega R over 18 pi in the Z hat direction. That's nice. We like saving time. Um, we also know that uh, the fields were from chapter 5. I'll post both of the questions. And the product omega R can be quickly found by comparing momentums. L equals LEM. So what we have here is that we had the L from uh, from what we found here. Um, and we also had H bar over 2 from what we were given in the question. So if we're just looking for omega R, just multiply over the 18 pi, divide by mu naught e squared. And you see that uh, the, the 2 cancels the 18 to a 9. And we're left with 9 pi H bar over mu naught e squared. Numerically, what this says is that the velocity is equal to 9 times 9.23 times 10 to the 10 meters per second. Um, this doesn't seem right for an electron, but we'll go ahead and move forward. Now, to find a radius, we have to use the work total equal E. So if we know that the C total is what it is, what we need to do is find a common denominator. So we factor out an E squared over 4 pi, and then we're left with from the E field, 1 over 2 epsilon naught r plus mu naught omega squared r over 9. We're trying to find a common denominator, so we multiply by 2 over uh, epsilon naught r for both of that. And uh, what we can do now is factor out a 2 over epsilon naught in the denominator. And what we see here is that we have 1 plus this uh, big fraction inside the bracket, which again we can reduce down with uh, c squared for epsilon naught mu naught. And we see that we end up with e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r bracket 1 plus 2 omega squared r squared over 9 c squared. And if you noticed, omega squared r squared and c, or omega r and c are all squares, so we can just put this big square on it. And so we can simplify this down to 1 over 8 pi epsilon naught e squared over r bracket 1 plus 2 over 9 times omega r over c squared. And uh, set that equal to, uh, well, e for equal mc squared. So if we set that equal to mc squared, we can go ahead and uh, fat or push this thing through for r and find what the radius is. So here we have 1 over 8 pi epsilon naught, which is the first fraction in the r, since we multiplied it over. And we divide it by mc squared. Uh, pretty quick algebra. We know what the mass of the electron is. We know what the speed of light is. We know more importantly what the, uh, yeah, excuse me, the charges of an electron. But more importantly, we found what the uh, product of omega r was in the last step, so we can plug that in. And we see that, uh, let the calculator do all the work for you, because it's a mess. We see that we have 2.95 times 10 to the negative 11 meters as our radius. And similarly, we know that since we found omega r last time, as our product and we just found r we can divide by r and find what e omega is and that's what we do and we see that that's equal to 3.13 times 10 to the 21 radians per second okay so going back to omega r not making sense well since omega r is the speed of a point on the equator is 300 times the speed of light this classical model clearly is unrealistic um yeah so use your intuition on that speed of light being a bound that we have is a quite a nuisance to deal with but puts things into perspective on our models not a good model in classical sense